everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and this time around it's Darkwing Duck, brought to us by Capcom. Now, Darkwing Duck is another great Disney-Capcom collaboration, and of course it's based off the hit television series. Darkwing Duck is very comparable to the other Disney-Capcom games, as well as other Capcom franchises, including Mega Man. Your main weapon, being your gun, works very similar to Mega Man's Mega Buster. Darkwing Duck also happens to be one of my personal favorite cartoons. I watched almost every episode growing up, and I watched them again and again every single morning before I went to school, so I probably know a lot more about Darkwing Duck than I probably should, and it's definitely going to show throughout the video. So here we go with Darkwing Duck on the NES. Being that this game is very similar to the other Disney Capcom games, you do have a choice at the beginning of the game to pick from one of three levels. You complete those three levels, and then you move on to another set of three levels, which you can also choose at random, and then you move on to the final stage of the game. Now, all the stages take place in different parts of the city, and they all end with fighting one of the many enemies of Darkwing Duck. I think one of the many reasons I like Darkwing Duck so much is that it drew from many different comic books, including DC and Marvel, but especially on the DC side with Batman. And since Batman was very popular during the early 90s, it's not a shock that I became a huge fan of both. Darkwing Duck is also one of the first spin-off cartoons that I really remember. A spin-off, of course, being when a character leaves a popular show to start their own show. In this case, Launchpad McQuack, who was on DuckTales, leaves DuckTales and came over to Darkwing Duck for a whole new series of cartoons. Another character that also made the jump was Gizmo Duck from DuckTales, who ended up coming over to Darkwing Duck and starting a rivalry with Darkwing. Now, similar to DuckTales 2, we have Launchpad telling us about each of the levels before we enter them, and we also get the choice of a yes or a no before entering the level. Now, here is stage 1. This is in the basic city, and we start off on a bridge. Now, our first boss that we have to deal with is Quackerjack, who's one of many Darkwing's enemies. He's actually one of the more popular ones. Uh, there, there was a lot of enemies on Darkwing Duck, but there was always, like, a core set. Uh, you can really tell which one was the core set, because they actually unite together and form their own group. All five members of that group, the Fearsome Five, are boss characters actually in this game. Now in this game, you move around on simple platforms just like any of the other, uh, like Disney Capcom games. And like I said, it mixes up Mega Man with like some other games like DuckTales, uh, especially DuckTales 2 when it added the ability to hang on the platforms. Now, Darkwing Duck did get released before DuckTales 2, so I guess you could say they took that element of the gameplay and brought it to DuckTales 2. Uh, but you can just definitely tell just from the look and the feel and the music that it's a very similar game compared to other Capcom games. Uh, I actually do like the soundtrack a lot in this game, because it actually is more of the jazz feel than I think some of the other soundtracks had, and it fit the game very well and went along with the show. The difficulty in the game is actually pretty tough as well. It's one of those ones just like Mega Man, where you're going to have to go through the level several times before you realize what all the enemies can do, how to take them out the best way, which ones to avoid, uh, making it over certain jumps. And, you know, it can be, you know, pretty challenging. And I think all the Disney Capcom games at first can actually seem pretty difficult, even though they were really meant for kids, of course, being based off of different cartoons. Now, you also have a few different abilities, and I just grabbed one there, and you can actually switch by hitting the select button. And you have a couple of them. You have, like, a spread shot, as well as you have the one I grabbed, which is, like, this bigger shot that you release, and it hits the ground and then splits off into two different directions. For the most part, I really don't suggest using these abilities. Uh, there is a couple of bosses where it works well against. It just happens to be that the first boss we're about to fight, Quacker Jack, is actually pretty vulnerable to that weapon I just mentioned. Get Crawl down, and shoot one of the shots, and as you can see, as it shoots off, it hits him. If you drop all the way down to his level, he will start to jump up. Now at the top of the screen, throwing like the banana peels at us is Paddywhack, uh, Quacker Jack's doll that actually gets possessed in one episode, but basically he talks to it and he actually does the voice of it, he's not really talking or anything. Uh, very similar to the Batman villain Ventriloquist, where he thinks he's hearing uh, stuff from the doll Scarface in that case. One last little side thing, uh, Quacker Jack is actually voiced by Michael Bell, who is one of the most famous uh, voice actors from cartoons. He voiced voices in G.I. Joe and Transformers, and actually recently did a voice of Sed in Lost Odyssey, which is one of my favorite games as of late. Now, the second level we're going to is Wolf Duck's level. Now, as far as I really remember, Wolf Duck wasn't in the cartoon. I'm sure if he was, someone will prove me wrong, but I, from every episode I remember, and I've, I've been watching it again recently, I don't think he's in the series, but that would actually make him one of the few bosses that's not a member of the Fearsome Five, the other two uh, being Professor Moriarty, as well as Steelbeak, who is the final boss of the game. Now, this level uh, is, you know, takes place in the city, and it slowly turns from day to night. Uh, at night, Wolf Duck turns into his werewolf form, 
uh, that uh, Launchpad actually mentioned in our little brief synopsis of the level before we entered it. Uh, overall, you know, being the second level of the game, uh, it's definitely not near the toughest by any means, but you start to see why this game is actually pretty tough. Some of the platforms are a little harder to jump, uh, including those wheels that we had to jump on. They start moving and we have to go over the spikes. Of course, touching the spikes does damage to us. And with only having one heart, which is equal to four uh, slots of health, it can be a pain uh, over some of these jumps and making you over certain enemies. Now here is one of the unique platforming elements of the game. We have to blow up a balloon and then jump on it, hang on to it as it flies over uh, some gaps. Now you can stay onto the one balloon as long as you didn't jump off to grab the power up or kill the turtle and you just go straight over and drop off at the end. Now go over. These enemies can be definitely annoying because you have to hit them in the glowing thing on the top of their head. If you uh, hit them like you know anywhere else, they shrink down and you miss them. Uh, they actually, you know, can fall into themselves. Uh, so you have to be careful about where you accidentally shoot them. As you see right there, I missed one shot, but I was able to hit the other one. There we go. He's done. Now continuing on, make the big jump down here, and takes us to the boss fight, which takes place at night. It switches instantly from day to night here. Uh, as the enemy is this small little duck that, uh, as he reaches uh, one side of the screen, he walks up real quick, and then he throws a, you know, large box at us. Uh, when the moon is actually covered up, you can see at the top of the screen, that's when he, uh, he shrinks. See, the moon's now covered up, he shrinks back down. Now, you can use the regular pistol shot, or you can use the lightning shot, that, you know, multi-spread shot that I was using. Uh, either one works well against them. I don't know which one works better or not. I'm not positive on that. After, you know, going back and forth a few times, he's taken care of, and the second level is now complete. Now, just like the other games uh, in the Disney Capcom series, you uh, have a score that racks up at the end of it, similar to the money count, and you also have a point system in the Tailspin game. Uh, in this game, though, there really isn't a necessary, uh, you know, goal for the points. They're just for, you know, a little extra thing to see how high your score is. So now we move on to the third level of the game. Uh, this is where Liquidator is the end boss of it. Now, he is a uh, main villain from the uh, Darkwing Duck cartoon. He was actually a member of the Fearsome Five I mentioned earlier. Now, interestingly enough, uh, Liquidator is actually his like origin story, is similar to the Joker uh, in this one that he was uh, the owner of a water purification company that sold bottled water. Uh, during a heat wave, he contaminated his competitor's water uh, with some poison or whatever. And what makes him similar to Joker is that uh, when Darkwing Duck pursues him, when he's caught, he actually falls into one of the poisonous vats and seemingly dies from it, but in the end, he actually gains power. Now, completely different in all, his power is that he is pure liquid and, you know, can melt into a puddle and then rise uh, back up, so he makes a pr for an interesting villain. His level, of course, would have something to do with water, in which case this level is based in the sewer, and it also has, you know, a, a darkness element you have to deal with, uh, hitting these certain switches to pull on the light, so that you can see, uh, you know, certain gaps and such. But they don't become a, necess you know, a necessity in order to complete the level, because you can pretty much clearly see each of the gaps before attempting to make the jump. And since I did mention Quacker Jack's voice, I might as well say that uh, Liquidator was actually voiced by Jack Angel uh, in the cartoon, uh, and one of the things that he did that is one of my other favorite things is he's the narrator for the game Killer7, which is one of my personal favorite games. Now as we continue on, we have these weird kangaroos that sit and hop, they're really easy enemies, but the real challenge is they throw stuff at us that actually unlock the first uh, bonus game that I've actually gotten. Certain random parts of the levels unlock certain bonus games that you can do, and in this one, you have to shoot these pills that drop down these, like, eggs, and they end up dropping uh, certain upgrades as well as each one you shoot gives you points. Now, it's just like a little fun minigame for extra points. It really doesn't affect anything. There's another one similar to it in the Tailspin game, uh, in which case you just go around and it's for extra points and such. Nothing really adds to the game. Uh, there was also a bonus level in the DuckTales games that you could use to get some extra money, but it wasn't a necessity and it really wasn't anything bonus-wise uh, to find in the game. Only thing is, once you return to the level, you get set back to, like, I guess the last checkpoint of each level, so that's a little bit of a pain to get you a little bit of backtrack. Avoid the kangaroos that throw, like, the bombs at you, and continue on for some more platforming, including where we have to jump down here to get to the sewer grates, and as you can see, you can hang on 
And now we have to use, you know, classic platforming. Hang on to the bottom of it, but when you continue 